Hey summoners and welcome back to another pro guides video. I really hope that your ranked climb for season 9 ended the way that you wanted it to, but if it didn't don't worry about it too much, because as corny as it is, every failure truly is just a stepping stone on your journey to improvement. And with the end of season 9, we think it's time to delve into the preseason and we're here to show you guys 10 bot lane duos that you can abuse in season 10. Our analysts have handpicked these bot lane duos out and they strongly believe that they will help you carry during the preseason and on during season 10 as long as they don't face some pretty insane nerfs. For our question of the day, do you prefer to queue up solo or duo and why? Personally, I prefer to play duo because it's more fun with a friend, but when I'm trying to actually climb, I do prefer to play solo. Before we get started though, make sure you go to ProGuides.com and check it out to get a jump start on your preseason climb. We have so much material on there, ranging from VOD reviews by our challenger analysts to courses dedicated to macro play. So if you're serious about improving and pushing to improve for next season, there is no better time to start than right now, guys. Check it out, seriously. Now with that being said, let's get this show on the road. Our first bottom lane duo really shouldn't come as a surprise to you if you've watched any competitive games last season. Especially if you watched Worlds, you should know how much priority teams placed onto Yasuo and Gragas bot lane as a duo. We ended up seeing this duo quite a bit, especially in G2's games, most notably when they were matched up against Danbon Gaming and SK Telecom. Let's talk about why pro players value this lane so much. First off, they are two very straightforward ones that apply to pretty much every game. Kill pressure and scaling. For Yasuo and Gragas, they have a huge amount of kill pressure at pretty much all stages of the game and also scale extremely well into the late game. While Gragas is quite average, he sets up insane ultimates for Yasuo who is one of the stronger late game champions in the entire game. While this duo may not be super prevalent at level 1, by the time they hit level 3 they come online and can apply a ton of kill pressure onto their opponents. Once Yasuo has all of his abilities he's able to dash through minion waves and trade aggressively with his Q and then wind wall any retaliation damage back. Gragas is also able to CC his opponents and also deal a significant amount of damage in the early game, pressuring his enemies from bushes. Once they both hit level 6, the threat of a Gragas ult followed up by a Yasuo ult makes it nearly impossible for virtually any bottom lane duo to walk up to farm. By that point, Yasuo can basically jump to his opponent at will and all in them. It's also worth noting that Hail of Blades is another keystone option for Yasuo as it further increases his kill pressure during the early game. Once the mid to late game hits, Yasuo's wind wall and insane damage allow him to dominate teamfights with ease. Gragas' ultimate and his E continue to act as free setup for his ultimate, making them one of the strongest teamfighting bot lanes in the game. Our second bot lane duo is Vagar Nautilus. While they might seem like an oddball at first, the amount of CC that they provide makes them pick making machines who can thrive in the chaos of solar. Queue. Early on their kill pressure is quite low, but Vagar will slowly scale up and be able to heavily pressure his opponents around level 6 or level 7. That's not to say though that their laning phase is weak, because Vagar Cage puts his opponents in a sticky situation and Nautilus has a much easier time landing hooks when his enemies are confined to a closed in space. The biggest strength that this duo has during the laning phase is how well they set up ganks for your jungler. They have an insane amount of crowd control that practically any jungler will find free kills as long as they're not caught out by a deep ward. Like the previous duo, they scale very well as Vagar has access to technically unlimited AP with his passive and both of them provide a ton of crowd control. Vagar can go for a Glacial Augment and open up more possibilities of hard engaging as well as picking out misposition enemies. Up next is Heimerdinger and Fiddlesticks. This duo is so annoying to play against. You get constantly poked, shoved under turret, and then, well, guess what? Poked some more. If you want to all in them, you have to be ready to take an upgraded turret as well as Crowstorm to the face in exchange. For you fiddle players out there, it's worth noting that Aftershock is not as good anymore as it is receiving some nerfs next season. While the cooldown is being reduced significantly, the base resistances it provides are also significantly lower, making it a lot weaker on champions that don't build any armor or magic resistance. This duo is able to constantly shove their opponents into the turret and then continue harassing them. Fiddlesticks' E can bounce through the minions and onto his opponents, and Heimerdinger can also look to throw some missiles at them and in between the minion wave. 
Although come late game they are not as strong as the previous two bot lane duos that we talked about, their early game is arguably the most oppressive of any of the bot lane duos. If you don't know, Dragon is receiving some hefty changes next season, so this duo will make securing Dragon so much easier for your team. The power of an insane early game is much more valuable, and that's why we think this bot lane duo will also be one of the best for next season. Heimer and Fiddlestick still do their own thing though. Heimerdinger provides neutral objective control and makes it very difficult for his opponents to engage, and Fiddlestick brings great utility and can punish his opponents heavily with his ultimate. Up next, we have Pike paired up with either a Yumi or Senna. Although Aftershock is receiving some nerfs, we still think that it might be necessary on Pike because he's a melee champion that really takes a beating. Alternatively, you can take Electrocute if you want some extra damage and some kill pressure. With Presence of Mind receiving some changes, we believe that running Ultimate Hunter on him will help mitigate this change. Both of these bot lane partners help Pike pop off even harder. Yumi can help keep Pike alive and also synergizes very well with his playstyle. She makes Pike faster, increases his pick range, and also uses her ultimate while attached to him. Since Pike has incredible mobility, she's able to get a lot of value out of her ultimate when she's attached. Senna, on the other hand, pairs very well with Pike because of the added sustain and more importantly, some more damage. Everyone is hyping up how much damage she does, which is great because it'll help set up more Pike ultimates. Additionally, Pike is the one usually initiating fights, meaning it's a lot easier for Senna to land her W. Another one of the reasons that this bot lane duo is so popular is that either of the champions can take the farm. Senna can opt for the Black Mist Scythe route and allow Pike to take all the farm, or instead she can be the main carry with Pike only taking minions for his support quest. While Senna's passive is currently converting AP from Spell Thieves into AD, we think that this change will likely be nerfed next season with the addition of the new support items. Up next is another AP bottom lane duo, Syndra and Swain. The reason to pick this bot lane is if your team ends up heavily stacked on AD. If your team already has enough magic damage, it's quite honestly a hard int to pick this duo, as you'll definitely open up the opportunity for your enemies to stack MR and hard counter your team. With that said, however, this duo is a good medium as they have a very strong early game and a late game, but not necessarily the best ones. During the laning phase, they have a ton of kill pressure, as Syndra's stun can easily lead to Swain rooting and then following up, topping off by pulling enemies in with his passive. Both of these champions have incredible level 6 all-in potential, so they can usually fish for kills on that power spike. During the mid and late game, they carry teamfights alone with all of their crowd control and insane damage. While both of these characters individually carry in their own way, they work surprisingly well as a pair. Swain is great for his crowd control and long-term teamfight damage, while Syndra is invaluable for her ability to one-shot a priority target. You get to cover both bases with this duo, meaning that you'll be able to win more teamfights and more games as a result. Up next is Pantheon Trist. This duo lane is high risk but very high reward as they scale extremely well but can easily fall behind if things go wrong. You have to play pretty aggressively with this duo because that's what they're all about. Panth and Triss both have incredible all-in, so they complement each other very well. If you have Tristana take press the attack and allow Pantheon to take a different aggressive keystone, they exert a ton of kill pressure with the extra damage that they have. Usually Tristana is able to jump twice, since Pantheon can easily stun a target and allow Tristana to detonate her explosive charge. After picking up a few kills, it becomes impossible to lose fights with this duo, as you can constantly jump in on your opponents and stomp them to the floor. Tristana is one of the best late game carries in the whole game, so you already know that this duo is going to have great late game assurance. Pantheon is okay as a champion, but compared to other supports, he deals a lot more damage. Comparatively, this duo has a lot of late game power and can especially carry really hard in lower elo games when people don't really know what to expect. One bot lane that most of you are probably already familiar with is Garen Yumi. We still think this duo will be great next season, and we saw Fnatic and Damwon Gaming pull this duo out over the course of Worlds as well. Garen has been nutty ever since he received some changes to his E that allowed him to stack up Conqueror. Yumi alleviates all of his weaknesses and makes him even harder to kill. She gives this insane juggernaut some crowd control and movement speed to help him hunt down his adversaries. While the early game change can be rough, they scale up to apply a ton of kill pressure after level 6. Garen can easily charge at his foes with his kitten on his back. The lockdown that Yumi provides for Garen makes it very easy for him to stay on top of his target. 
Garen's damage is insane, but the hard part is getting to and staying on enemies, and that's where the Yumi comes in. She makes both of these things really easy, allowing the Beyblade King to literally spin to win. Kale Nautilus is another duo that we need to talk about. We saw SKT pull this one out as an answer to the Garen and Yumi lane, and at the very least, you need to know what to pick if someone tries pulling a Garen Yumi on you. In that specific matchup, Kale can poke Garen out and scale up for free since she isn't under much kill threat by a Garen. This duo will be a great answer to pretty much any melee matchup in the bottom lane. We think that melee carries are definitely still viable, though the more popular ones are currently Garen and Yasuo. As the pool opens up though, Kale will rise up as a great answer because she can farm up to level 6 and transform into a ranged champion for free into the melee lane. In this lane, Nautilus kind of hard carries the first 6 levels, with his insane damage and crowd control. After them though, Kale comes online and their opponents are not in for a fun time. Kale deals pretty solid poke damage and also scales, of course, incredibly well. Her enemies are under a lot of pressure to shut her out, and it's really difficult when her lane partner is also such a strong champion like Nautilus is. A huge bonus about this lane is that Kale's W will heal both her and the Nautilus, meaning that they can both heal back some damage that they take during the trades. In the late game, this is basically any old Nautilus plus Marksman duo. Good crowd control, great peel, and a very strong hyper carry. In this case, that hyper carry is Kale, who provides a ton of utility alongside all of her damage. Up next is Misfortune, alongside either a Vagar or an Ash. The fundamental core of this duo is strong setup for Misfortune to succeed. Although we've displayed all of the builds as carry builds, it is worth noting that any of these champions can play as the support, so adjust the builds as necessary. With the addition of Spectral Sickle next season, AD range supports are going to have a lot more presence in the bottom lane. With either of the duos, Misfortune is really able to hard pressure her enemies with her ultimate. Ash can either slow or stun enemies with her arrow, while Vagar can use his cage to lock them into a tight space. After this, Misfortune can clean up the house with her ultimate. We first saw this at Worlds during Season 6, and the Ash Misfortune combo has become pretty iconic since then. Both variations of the lane scale up incredibly well because you get to run two carries in any situation. This means that you have great damage but still some good utility since all of these champions can provide some form of crowd control. The greatest strength that these duos provide is their ability to carry teamfights. They're also able to hard engage with either Ash or Vagar, while MF's ultimate melts down her enemies. To wrap things up, we're gonna throw in another uncommon duo, Aurelia and Taric. Bottom Aurelia has lost a lot of popularity, but it was one of the most hyped champions following one of the most infamous patches a couple of seasons ago. We will work backwards with this duo. Their late game is incredible, of course. Aurelia's backline access, tankiness, and high damage make her one of the best late game characters for carrying teamfights, so long as she has someone else to support her, which is where the Taric comes in. Taric's ultimate is one of the most impactful abilities in the entire game, so that alone makes his late game pretty insane. During the laning phase, this duo applies plenty of kill pressure. While Taric's stun can be pretty hard to land, Aurelia makes this a lot easier for two reasons. First off, she has her own stun, so Taric can easily follow up on this. Secondly, it's easier to land a Taric E when you have a melee lane partner rather than a ranged one. Since Aurelia likes to, you know, jump on her enemies for the trades, they're already in range for an immediate Taric stun if they're not careful. In most cases, especially if the communication between the players is strong, it's basically impossible to dodge that Taric stun coming out of Aurelia since she's already gonna be right on top of you. Both of these champions deal a very high amount of damage in the early game so they can play pretty aggressive and then find kills on their opponents whenever they overextend. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you wanna see more content like this or a ton of helpful content related to gameplay, check out our YouTube channel as well as ProGuides.com where we've teamed up with professional players to design the best content to help you improve. Good luck on the Rift and we hope to see you all next time.